Hey guys, you're back with Steph and Dennis and we haven't done a more casual video in a while where we just talk to you guys about our money and what's going on with our investments and everything like that. So we wanna bring a few more of these videos back to the channel, starting off with talking about our investment portfolios how they're doing right now, especially with all the talks about a recession. You know, we've been talking about it a lot. There's even more in the news and just out there right now and it's gonna continue to happen. So we wanna talk specifically about our investment portfolios and how they've been looking. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, I actually started investing for the very first time almost exactly four years ago. It would've been like May, the year that I graduated from university. That's when I invested for the first time. We've talked about it on this channel before. I started out investing in mutual funds, only $25 a month, ended up upping that amount to $250 a month month and then more recently about a year and a half ago now switching into well simple invest and i invested at least a thousand dollars a month for the last year and a half too and over that time my investments itself has grown to over twenty five thousand dollars and the last time we did an update i think i was sitting at an eight percent return so my money was actually growing and doing really well and then that was the case in every update video that we've done so far on the channel until around March. And that's when a lot of people start to started to see their portfolio go down. And mine is no different than that. It's definitely been crashing. I think as of right now, when we're filming the video, we'll hop on and show you in a sec, but I'm down at least 7% of my portfolio right now, which is not a fun feeling. Now I'm actually really, really excited to talk about this with you guys. Obviously you can tell. I'm excited to go over it, which seems a little bit weird considering how badly the investments are doing, but it's because typically in the past when we've done these updates, my portfolio been growing or I've changed something up, right? Like my risk level in my robo advisor, stuff like that. But this time, haven't done anything and everything has been going down. So we're gonna start out with going over my portfolio right now, showing you exactly what it looks like. And then we're gonna switch over to Dennis's portfolio too. So you can really dive into the details of the differences of what's going on. You can see it crashing down. But before we get into all of that, please give this video a big like down below if you're excited for it. It really helps out the channel. It makes us really happy. So go give it a like first and then we'll jump into it. Okay, so now we're over at the desk area because I'm gonna actually take you guys into my investment portfolio so we can take a look at all the holdings and exactly what everything's sitting at right now. But first I wanna do a really quick recap of what my investment portfolio setup is. So I use a robo-advisor right now, and basically what a robo-advisor is, is it's an algorithm that buys your investments for you and makes sure, make sure your portfolio is rebalanced and all of that. So basically I set it up for the first time, I make sure that my money is automatically going every month into this account, and then the algorithm does the actual buying of the investments, so I don't have to actually do that myself and it also rebalances it and makes sure everything's looking good. Basically, it's set it up once and then forget about it. Um, I use Well Simple Invest for this. They call it investing on autopilot. Um, and we've done a few videos about it in the past too. One thing I wanna point out is that when you're setting up your portfolio, you also get to select your risk level. So for Well Simple specifically, they do it on a scale of one to 10. One is less risky, which means more bonds, fixed income. And then 10 is the most risky. We'll talk about that in a second, um, which means that there's more equities, stocks, ETFs that way. ETFs that are full of equity. So in my case, I actually currently am sitting at an 11 out of 10, um, which is a special request that you have to make. And it means that I have a 100% equities portfolio. We'll link a video for you guys if you are interested in checking that out and you missed it earlier this year, but it explains more about how that works and why I chose to do that. Um, but that's it on the setup itself. Right now in my robo-advisor, I have $25,000 that I've contributed over the last year and a half. I also have $3,000 sitting on Well Simple Trade, which is an individual stocks that I bought in over that time. Um, I'm not contributing to that anymore. I'm just kind of letting that sit there and grow or <laughs> not grow right now. Um, and I'm focused instead on my long-term passive ETFs. So with all of that being said, let's actually take a look over here and see what exactly what's going on inside my portfolio and let's get it together. So this is the landing page. You can again see that I have $25,078 in there, but I'm down $921. If you look at this yellow graph, it still looks like it's going up um, overall. And that's partially because I contribute $1,000 every month. So I put $1,000 into the account. So naturally the value of the account is still going up, but those investments themselves aren't growing right now. In fact, if you look down here, you can see the account that I use, the investment account is my TFSA or tax-free savings account. And in there, I'm actually at a negative, a loss of 3.5%. What's funny when I looked at this today is that when originally when we planned this video, I was down almost 8%, 7.9% to be exact. So it's changing up day by day. We'll talk in a bit about why mine's down a little bit less um, than others might be. But let's actually dig in and look at my holdings specifically. So if we click in here, you can see a little bit more, a better view um, of what they project that I'll have over time, if this were to keep up. And also over here, what I really want us to look at is my portfolio. So again, 100% equities. I have a customized theme because it's the 11 out of 10 and view my holdings. So my portfolio is made up of a few different geographically diversified ETFs. 
So I have U.S. equities, which is 33-ish percent of my portfolio, about a third. I have international equities, 25 percent. Emerging market market equities at 17 percent. Canadian equities at 12 and a half, and global equities at 12 and a half. So a lot of global diversification there. One thing I want to bring up before I dive into what each ETF is at in terms of a loss or growth right now is the fact that I only have 33% in U.S. equities. So if we were comparing my portfolio to like the S&P 500, which we always use in our videos, it's down a lot more than 3% for the year. That's more comparable to this CTF compared to my overall portfolio, a lot of global diversification. So it's not quite the same in terms of returns. So if you're looking at the screen, you can see exactly which ETFs I have. It looks like I have about six of them across these different geographic allocations. Some of them like VTI is down 3.8% for myself for the year. Um, one's actually up 1.5% QUU, but my biggest loss at the moment is 11.3%. And that's in my international equities. Um, emerging markets is down more as well. Same with Canadian and then global a little less so. So this average overall is what brings me to about three and a half percent down right now. Now I did want to talk about these different ETFs for just a second, all six of them in the globally diversified group of them that I have right now. Um, what I really liked about using a robo advisor at first when I started investing and knowing more about my investments about a year and a half ago is the fact that I didn't know which ETFs I wanted to invest in yet, right? And I like that they actually bought the investments for me. I couldn't forget to do that or not make it happen every month. It's rebalanced. It's still very low fee compared to investing with bigger banks or mutual funds or anything like that, which we've talked about a lot on the channel before. But the other thing is I've started to learn more about investing. I've gotten more confident and comfortable with it. I know a lot more about ETFs. Um, is that you don't actually get to pick, right? What's in your robo-advisor fund. The platform does that for you. That's kind of part of what you're paying them to do or having them do for you is choose your investments um, outside of your risk level, of course. That's where you have some say, but not the specific ETFs themselves. So this is something that might change in the future. I'll always bring that along with you guys, of course, if anything ever changes up for me. But right now I still really like using it. I also know that investing during this time, even though my portfolio is down, is something I wanna keep doing. So um, for now, I'm gonna continue to use Wellsimple Invest and put my $1,000 in there. Also, I wanna make sure that I reiterate that whether my portfolio is down 3.5%, 8%, whatever happens with it right now, that really doesn't affect me and my mood much. Now, of course it kind of does when you look at it and you want to see it growing, it feels really good. But since I'm investing for the long term, my short term investments, the actual value in my portfolio, that doesn't do anything for me because I'm going to have my money in the market for decades, which is hard to wrap your head around when you've only been investing for a few years. But my money's going to be here for a long time. Over the long term, it can actually ride with the waves of the dips and the growth, dips and growth of the market. There's going to be many of them. So that doesn't really impact me much. In fact, when the prices are lower, it's a good time to continue to invest. So that's what I keep an eye on. So if you're investing right now, or if you wanted a place to start and you want to look into Wellsimple and RoboAdvisors, we'll have a link down below for you guys to check it out. But for now, we're actually going to switch over to Dennis and see what he's doing instead. All right, guys. So to kick things off with my portfolio right away, I'm just going to say it so that we can get it out of the way and actually get to the details. But yes, I'm down 20% since I started investing back in 2020. Now, if we take a look at my portfolio, my main core holding is XEQT. So this is actually the fund that I contribute to each and every single month. And and what's, what's really great about it is that it's a one fund solution. So what that means is that my take to self-directed investing, so me actually going out and buying my own funds and managing it myself, I've made it really, really simple. So basically all I have to do is buy this one single fund each and every single month and the rest is taken care of for me. So when it comes to diversification, when it comes to um, having to rebalance my portfolio, I don't have to worry about any of that because Basically, all I do is I buy this one fund, aka one fund solution. So we haven't done a follow up on my overall portfolio in a while, but I would say as of right now, I have about $23,000 invested in XEQT. So, you know, once again, this is the only fund that I have the bulk of my money in with the exception of Aritzia. So Aritzia, I probably have about like, you know, maybe $4,000 in there in, into that stock. But, and once again, it, it is down right now, given the climate that we're in, given the fact that we're, we're probably in a recession as we speak. So a lot of companies really have, have gone down from some of their all time highs, but I'm not really mad at that because once again, my, my main focus moving forward is on putting as much money as I can consistently into XEQT. So if you guys remember, we did a video a while back where we literally talked about how I was clearing out some of those, um, you know, crappy growth companies and putting the bulk of my money and all of my effort towards XEQT, something that 
you know, does have that diver diversification. And once again, this is also a big part of the reason as to why my lifetime return is also where it's at right now because of having to get rid of some of those growth growth stocks. You know, before we kind of move on to something else, let's just hop on the computer really quick, um, kind of like what Steph did in a way. I'm not gonna go through like my portfolio kind of in depth, but we can look at the market and what's been happening. And we can also look at the main funds that we love to talk about on this channel. So yeah, let's, let's jump over. Okay, so there's a couple things that I wanna go over. Now, I do have a lot of tabs open on my computer. We're not gonna go through basically everything that I have open, but there are some key things that I think are gonna be super beneficial and just really great food for thought over the next couple months, right? So number one, XEQT, right? As of right now, it's down approximately 15%. Same with the S&P 500. Now, the reason I'm talking about both of those is because XEQT is obviously the fund that I invest in, and then the S&P is obviously a really great just general um, index or a key index that we use often at times to actually measure how the market's doing, right? So the reason I bring those two up is because if we take a look at, if we take a look at this article from CNBC, right? This week it was announced that GDP had fallen for the second quarter in a row, right? So what that means is that, that that actually meets the definition of what a recession is. So from a technical perspective, we could actually be in a recession right now. But yeah, if we go over to one of the key highlight stories, especially for those of you that are Canadian, Shopify laid off 10% of its um, employees. That's not good news, right? Their, their stock apparently sank 14% as soon as they said that they were laying off workers. So what's interesting is that I actually saw this on LinkedIn, right? So um, I saw so many so many posts just start coming up of people saying I was laid off. Um, if anyone in the network can help me out, like this is what we're gonna continue to see, especially if we're going deeper and deeper into that recession territory. So um, yeah, these are, these, are the, these are the few things or the key highlight stories that I wanted to share because I think it's really important. I think it's important for us to actually stay up to date and just aware of what's happening.